بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم ایوری ون آئی ہوپ ایوری بڈی از ایبسلیوٹلی گریٹ اینڈ یو آر ٹیکنگ ویری گڈ کیئر آف یور سیلس اینڈ آلسو کورنگ آل دا لیکچرس تھرو دا لٹریچر وچ ہیز آلریڈی بین پرووائڈیڈ ٹو یو ان دا لاسٹ لیکچر وی اسٹڈیڈ دا بیسک پرائسنگ اسٹریٹجیز ان دا ٹو آف دا پرائسنگ میجر پرائسنگ اسٹریٹجیز وچ ور ایکچولی دا کاسٹ بیسڈ پرائسنگ اسٹریٹجی اینڈ دا ویلو بیسڈ پرائسنگ اسٹریٹجی وی سیٹ دیٹ وی آر گوئنگ ٹو سی ہاؤ آر وی گوئنگ ٹو ایکچولی ڈو دس کاسٹ بیسڈ پرائسنگ اینڈ دا ویلو بیسڈ پرائسنگ کیلکولیٹ دس کاسٹ بیسڈ اینڈ ویلو بیسڈ پرائسنگ And I said that uh, because uh, this pricing strategy uh, lecture is actually important, we are going to actually divide this lecture into two different parts. But now what I've done is that I've divided the, uh, this, the whole lecture series of pricing strategy into uh, three to four different uh, parts. So what you're going to do, uh, what we're going to see is um, the upcoming uh, in, in the upcoming lectures is uh, uh, today what we're going to do is um, this cost based pr uh, 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 pricing strategy and how do we actually go for, for the uh, cost based why do we uh, do this cost based uh, what are the benefits of the cost based strategy uh, uh, and then what we are going to see is that uh, the how can we actually go for this value based uh, uh, price uh, strategy and how can we actually calculate this uh, the price of the product based upon the value of uh, uh, the product and uh, from where can we actually derive the value how can we actually calculate the perceptions how can you how, how can you actually measure the perceptions of the people and the beliefs of the people uh, or the customers uh, then uh, what we are going to do is we are going to actually see uh, in the upcoming lectures is also the price elasticity of demand uh, that how does actually this price elasticity uh, affect uh, 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 the uh, the pricing strategy and how can uh, you people benefit uh, uh, with uh, uh, you know the this price elasticity uh, and the demand of your product and what what happens when you uh, actually when you the pro the demand of your product actually increases so uh, whether you have to actually take the price up below uh, 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 take the price low or you have to re uh, retain the price at the same position uh, okay now uh, the first thing first is that the cost based uh, pricing strategy which is being covered in this lecture is basically um, one of uh, the pricing strategies which is based upon the cost of the unit uh, 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 that you actually make um, so the basic thing that you need to understand over here is that um, in calculating the cost based price uh, what we need to have are the two basic things one is basically your fixed uh, cost right uh, the second one is your variable cost which actually gives you both of these actually give the total cost right so we have already we we have already discussed uh, in the finance section about uh, some of the costs which actually uh, should be counted as the fixed cost and uh, some of the uh, um, uh, costs which actually can be catered as the variable cost so uh, if you are actually uh, uh, developing any of the product uh, so what you need to actually calculate is that what is um, uh, the total amount of the cost uh, is it going to uh, Uh, each each unit is going to uh, have right so uh, when you actually if you are preparing like 10000 or the 15000 or maybe 100 units uh, um, for the customers then uh, the what is the total cost of those 100 units and from those 100 units what you are going to do is you are going to calculate uh, the overall markup with that markup is going to tell that how much uh, profit uh, are you going to actually make on each Uh, or maybe on each of the unit or maybe 100 of the units that you are actually providing to the customers so uh, the basic thing that you need to understand right now is uh, that you need to actually calculate your fixed cost and your variable cost so uh, logically speaking what is actually the fixed i'll just revise it for you that what is a fixed cost and the variable cost the fixed costs are uh, the cost which do not Uh, vary with the production of the sales level right uh, or maybe which when when you are actually um, producing uh, your um, the, the cost of that particular thing which is involved in um, making that product uh, does not vary for example um, your rent 
uh, for that particular time uh, may not vary, right? The uh, electricity bills or the gas bills, um, well, they not they may not vary. Uh, the interest or the executive salaries they may not may uh, uh, they may not vary. So if if these uh, four things or uh, there must there, there might be some other costs as well uh, which may not vary over the period of t uh, time or the during the time in which you are producing those 100 units so if you are not if, if, if the cost of these four uh, things or five or six things that you which you, with you which are not changing over the period of time in which you are producing those much amount of the units, then that cost, uh, which is incurring uh, uh, in within that period, is known as the fixed cost. Right. Um, on the other hand, when we talk about the variable cost, now the variable cost in which you actually buy uh, the raw material. Now the variable cost is generally the cost that actually varies with the level of the production. The more you produce, the more uh, 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 amount you would require per unit, right? So for packaging, for example, right? For packaging, what you need to do is if you are producing 100 units, you would actually require, uh, let's assume, uh, maybe, um, uh, you know, uh, uh, the lesser amount of, uh, for example, if, 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 you, uh, if the total cost of 100 your packaging of 100 units is rupees 1000 now if you're actually making it like 200 it may actually go to might be a possibility 1800 or maybe 2000 right and then when you're producing 300 400 500 the the, the cost is variable the more orders you get uh, uh, from the customers the more packaging and raw material would be required. So if more packaging and the raw material would be required, the higher the uh, uh, cost would go. So what you're going to do is you are going to actually calculate the variable cost for that much amount of the period and then calculate the price, right? Uh, total cost, uh, adding it up with the fixed cost. Right. So uh, this is uh, this is what a variable cost and this is what a fixed cost is. So um, although we had actually discussed it earlier, I thought it would be better if I actually revise it for you. Right. So now that we have understood that what is a fixed cost and what a uh, uh, what a, um, uh, a variable cost is uh, in cost plus pricing, which is actually your cost based pricing. Right. Is it the total cost is the sum of the fixed and the variable costs for any given level of production. Now remember this thing that over here from the beginning what we are discussing is actually the production. In the previous lecture we actually uh, in the previous slide we discussed the production uh, production over here we again discussed the production right so and over here what we have discussed is again about the production. So it's actually the amount of the production or the level of the production that you are having, right? So um, when we go later in, into these slides, we would actually see that um, these, these costs are actually calculated based upon uh, one-time project. So we will discuss it later on, right? So how much things, uh, uh, how many uh, units are we producing uh, in one particular time? We're going to calculate the fixed cost and the variable cost of that particular time, right? Okay. now. Cost based pricing adds standard markup to the cost of the. I mean, this, this is what we have already um, uh, discussed that uh, we can actually have a markup. Uh, might be a possibility if if your uh, um, uh, one unit actually costs around hundred rupees, right? Uh, so if you say that uh, we are going to have like twenty percent markup on it, so you actually calculate the add those rupees twenty at the top of the, uh, that 100 rupees and what you're going to do is you're going to actually sell it for rupees 120 uh, per unit right so the benefits of uh, uh, this type of um, pricing which is a cost plus pricing is basically that the sellers are certain about the costs right um, they they don't have to worry about that they are going to sell any of the units uh, lesser than what it is costing right uh, another benefit is that the prices and are similar in the industry and the price competition is minimized right the third one is the consumer feels it is fair right if 
if if i know that one unit is going to actually cost 100 rupees and you have only taken 20 rupees of the margin over that one unit the customer will be satisfied with it all right uh, uh, there'll be no ambiguity in the minds of the customers right uh, the second thing is uh, that uh, the, the the disadvantages of uh, the cost price uh, cost plus pricing or the cost based pricing is that it ignores the demand and uh, a competitor crisis right okay now that we have understood uh, that what are the benefits of and the uh, disadvantages of the cost based pricing uh, what we are going to do is we are going to actually see the three steps uh, in which we are going to calculate this cost plus pricing the first step is to determine uh, the total cost of production of uh, or services, uh, which is the sum of the fixed and the variable cost, as we discussed earlier. Right. Uh, the second step is to divide the total cost by the number of the units to determine the unit cost. Right. So we have been actually discussing about the unit cost as well. And number three is multiplying the unit of uh, unit cost by uh, markup percentage to arrive the setting cost of the profit margin of the product. Right. So this is exactly what we had discussed earlier. Now let us go back to um, uh, one of the examples that we had actually done earlier as well uh, when we were actually doing our finance section uh, and in this example uh, <clears throat> we actually saw that we wanted to have a, a livestock of around uh, 100 units or 100 calves uh, and we, used to actually, uh, uh, we were planning to actually um, you know uh, uh, do this calf fattening. Uh, project now remember this thing that this one year because this, this what we are going to do is we are going to buy the calves in uh, january and we're going to sell the calves in december right uh, so if we if you see in this table uh, although we had actually uh, seen this thing uh, uh, before as well but we had not actually discussed this example in this way that we are discussing right now right uh, so uh, you need the amount of the, uh, for the shed, which is actually the in initial investment. Uh, then what you need is uh, basically uh, the animals, which is basically another investment. Uh, the rest of the amount, if you see over the period of an year, they all remain consistent, right? So uh, because they are being consistent, so we are actually considering them as a fixed cost. If they may vary, for example, the amount of the uh, fuel may vary, the amount of the bills may vary, uh, the amount of the feed, hmm, uh, that would they, that, that has to remain the same. But the miscellaneous, then again, this miscellaneous charges, that has to actually remain uh, uh, vary. So uh, it can be the combination of the variable and the fixed cost both. Uh, but... Uh, <clears throat> At this point of time, what we are doing is we are not taking in as a, a variable cost, but we are taking them as a fixed cost, right? So um, this whole project, if we see, this is actually uh, a project of around uh, 11 months. Whereas the, in the 12th month, uh, we are going to sell the uh, calves off, all right? Uh, okay, so for this... Uh, let me actually uh, open the calculator on my another device and uh, let's actually calculate now. Um, the fixed cost overall actually over here, if you see, it's giving us 17,000 each month. Uh, uh, one, one, one lakh, 70,000, right? So this one lakh, 70,000 up till 11 years. So when we are going to actually calculate, we are going to see that 1,70,000 into 11, which actually is going to give us 1,70,000 into 11 is going to give us 1,870,000, right? Then because this uh, is for actually 100 units or the 100 uh, uh, calves. So this is 1870000 divided by 100 and which actually dividing it by 100 per unit cost is coming out to be 18700. Right. So let me actually 
uh, right over here at the top that the per unit cost is equals to 18700 right now that we are actually selling now this is the per unit cost that we are and per unit price that we have actually kept in this uh, 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 in this scenario is 70000 so we are actually selling of all the 100 units for 7 million which means that 7 million uh, one one unit has been sold for around um, you know 70000 so we bought it for 30000 we are selling it for 70000 and uh, the per unit cost over the period of 11 months came out to be uh, 18700 right so uh, what we are getting is um, 70,000, let me rub a little bit more so that uh, I can actually show you one more thing. So when we actually uh, talk about this 18,700 as a per uh, uh, unit and we are selling it for 7 million. So this se and per unit uh, price of the calf was determined as 70,000. Right, so seventy thousand minus eighteen thousand seven hundred gives us. Wait, let me calculate. Uh, that is seventy thousand uh, minus eighteen thousand seven hundred, which is giving us fifty one three zero zero. Right, so this is fifty one thousand three hundred. This is actually what our profit margin is per calf. Right. So per calf that we are setting, uh, uh, selling off per unit um, that we are selling off, we are getting 51,300. Uh, so based upon uh, this uh, 51,300 uh, and then we, if we actually divide this 51,300 uh, with uh, 70,000 right, and multiply it with 100, uh, we are going to get the margin. Right. So the margin over here is that would be around 73%. Let me calculate though. 51.300 uh, divided by 70,000 and 200 is 73.28. So that is 73.28%. So what we have kept in this scenario is the total margin, the total markup that we had actually discussed in the previous slides over here which is actually the market price uh, just right here market price so the market price that we are uh, putting in this scenario uh, as a the livestock scenario is 73.28 percent now based upon this 73.28 percent of the market price on one unit if you see the total amount that we had actually invested was actually 9 million right so we have this capital with which we want it to be utilized so we have not actually yet gained 9 million over here by the end of this year we still have 7 uh, 7 uh, 4 5 uh, 7.45 million right so now that we have actually seen this we are going to take this whole project for another year so this is another year that we are talking about again uh, being in very ideal uh, 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 situations we have actually kept the costs all the same. Uh, you can have, uh, uh, you know, um, uh, the the uh, variable costs along with the uh, fixed costs. Now, these variable costs and the fixed costs would again give you a certain amount. And again, if you see at the end of this year, by the 12th year, we are actually getting uh, 9.41 million, right? over here right so because we're getting like 9.41 million so uh, that's fairly enough because we have covered that 9 million bracket that we were talking about so this is where actually um, uh, we actually achieve the break even right <clears throat> This is where we achieve the break even. However, if we had not invested the 9 million of the capital over here, uh, we could have actually achieved with the 100 uh, calves that we had kept. Um, the, 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 uh, if we have not invested on you know, uh, the sheds or something like that, we could have easily, um, uh, you know, uh, uh, easily got this uh, break even in the first year as well. Okay, now, <clears throat> 
the purpose behind uh, the uh, discussing this example is uh, that we must um, when we are when, when we when we are actually um, uh, thinking through our project, uh, thinking through what we are going to sell, we must prepare a complete detailed financial uh, uh, you know uh, 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 detail like this, so that we should have an idea that uh, the with the price that we are keeping, um, how much time will it take for us to actually uh, get a break even. Uh, so that break even pricing um, that is another thing and the break even pricing uh, actually is uh, the price uh, at which the total costs are equal to the total revenue I mean this is what we have already discussed right then there is another sort of a pricing which is actually the target profit uh, profit pricing uh, which actually is uh, at uh, the rate of which uh, uh, the break even or uh, you know uh, the companies can make the profit and they can see that they are making uh, the profit uh, the point of discussing this break even pricing and the target profit pricing over here is because um, with the break-even pricing, you know, generally, uh, generally, what the companies actually do is uh, that uh, companies uh, consider that uh, what at earliest, uh, what is the situation in which early, in earliest they can actually uh, go for a break-even, right? So the break-even uh, volume for the the the, the, the uh, that uh, is to be calculated over here is basically on the fixed cost divided by price minus variable cost that is actually going to give you that uh, 30,000 of your break even now in our case the break even was around at 200 units if you see so uh, the 200 units uh, in the in the in the uh, 100 units in the first year and the 100 units in the second year it comes out to be around 200 units so that is when uh, in in the case of the calf fattening we actually got the break even so i hope uh, the cost based pricing is clear uh, so Keep it very simple for yourself. Uh, you have to consider the fixed cost. You have to consider the variable cost. You have to add both the costs, dividing it by the total number of the costs, you will actually attain the unit cost. And based upon uh, the total number of the units and for one production period, you will actually put a markup on those uh, number of units and that num uh, and, uh, that amount is actually going to become your um, you know uh, price just the way we had actually kept the 70,000 which the markup of 73.21% on the calves right I hope this cost based pricing is clear um, if you have any queries or if you have any um, uh, uh, questions uh, please do let me know on uh, uh, by commenting on the video or maybe through whatsapp or the facebook or uh, just calling me up right um, it, uh, till next time I hope you take care of yourselves. Allah Hafiz and bye-bye.